Hello, let's lay some dominoes. We'll play pips. We'll start with an easy puzzle. Um, we've got the same pattern as usual today. Uh, easy by Ian Livengood and Medium and Hard by Rodolfo Kirchin. Anyway, start with the easy. Let's solve this one. Right, we need fours coming out of that zone. One of them goes into a three-sized equivalence region, which looks like it will have to be threes, which means four one goes here, and then the less than three needs to be a one, Finally, we send our five into the void. There we have it. All right, let's try the medium puzzle. And it's an M, right? Rodolfo does like his uh, his alphanumeric characters. Okay, so what can we do here? We need greater than four connected to greater than two. That doesn't, well, I was going to say that doesn't seem very hard to achieve, but it actually is. I think it, I think it can only be this four connected to the five. Is that right? I think it is because the only things higher than four in this, in our dominoes are five and six and the other, those other possibilities don't work. So that's that. So then we need great, greater than one connected to greater than four. And that can now only be this two five because we've narrowed out, narrowed down our choices. Interesting. So now our only greater than four is a six. So that one must go here. And how do we make this seven? We could do four zero and a three. We could do two threes and a one. Um, I think that might be it. Yeah, those are the only possibilities. Okay, so that means two threes and a one, four zero and a three, okay. Uh, well, oh, sorry, we need greater than three. That's a four, That that's just forced. And so now that means we can't do four zero and a three. So it means we need double three and a one, but we also need a greater than two, so that three goes here, and then we send one of our ones into the void, and that's that. Okay, there we go. Probably could have solved that a bit more quickly, but it all flowed nicely. Let's try the hard puzzle. Oh, 10, look at that. We've got a two-digit number now. All right, We oh, we, look at this. We need six of something. Well, that will surely be forced, or at least forced in terms of what digit it is. Um, is it fives? No, no, it's not. Is it zeros? It might be zeros. I think it probably is, which would make sense because we can't put, well, no, I was going to say we can't put any zeros in the tens, but we could put them in three sized tens. I still think it's the zeros because I don't think we have anything else that, that reaches. Yeah, I think it is. Okay. So, and do we have exactly six? I guess we must, because that would be the... I guess you could have seven of the same thing in theory. Okay, so that means we need a double to go in there somewhere. Oh, and how many dominoes do we have that can make up 10 in a single domino? There's only a maximum of two, and we looks like we only have one. Right, okay, that's good to know. So let's think about this ring over here then. You know, if we put this in one of no that, that's impossible we can't put this in one of those because then it immediately breaks the neighboring tens because we only have one possibility of doing that so let's say we do that which is what we have to do i'm just putting these in to observe the geometry here not because any of these guesses are correct so uh it creates this okay so it creates a situation where i just wanted to see what it required so it requires a self-contained domino in that 10 region in the upper left corner i just wanted to know Okay. And actually, it'd be also kind of interesting to know how many sets of five sixes and fours we have to know if this, well, no, never mind. I was going to say to know if this five needs to go into a 10. If it does go into a 10, it needs to go in this one. But the thing is, it could also split across one like this, because we do have more, we do have still two five, more than two fives left. So that's actually possible as well. Right. How many sixes and fours do we have? One, two, three. We have three sixes and three sixes and three fours. So that allows for three instances of two cell ten regions. Plus the double five is four of those. Plus two more fives is five of those, which is exactly how many two cell ten regions we have. So I think what that means is we have one extra five 
no extra sixes and no extra fours. This might be more thinking than I need to do to get started with this, but I'm just trying to understand it. So what that does mean is we need to, to double this, we need to overlap the six onto something, I think. Because I think we need to use all of our sixes and all of our fours. Is that true? I think it might be. I think this might need to go here because we might need to get bits. You know, for instance, if we use this four, three, we'd, we'd want it, we couldn't use it into a different 10. We know we couldn't put it here because we don't have a seven. Similarly with this four, one. So that is intriguing. Uh, which means we could put the four five here and then another five going up into the 10. Although that's tricky. That's tricky. It would need to be this double five, but then, oh, but then, right, then the five could go to an equals. Okay, this might be correct. So it could, it wouldn't go to the zero because we're going to need, uh, sorry, what I mean is it wouldn't be five zero because we need all of our zeros, I think, for that large equivalence region. So it wouldn't be that. So it would be this 5, 3. And then we would need another 3, of course, poking out, which I think is more likely to be this 1 than this 4, but maybe not. Is there, is there a way this works? The, the rest of these would need to add up to exactly 6. Oh, right. And of course, this four would go here, if that were the case. Oh, interesting. Oh, right. Okay, it doesn't matter if we, you know, we could have put the four one in this arrangement, we could have put the four one up here, but then we'd be putting the other four down here. And it's the same thing. So these need to, these would need to add up to six then, which makes six zero. And I think we did say we had one extra six. So that actually makes sense. Um, oh, no, but now we've used a zero. No, that can't be right. That can't be right. Okay, this is this. So that was a, that was a long what if, but I think it's Im impossible, at least in the way that I did it. Okay, sorry. That was uh, that was longer than I intended to spend with that. Um, right. Okay. Let's look at our zeros again. We, need, we do need zeros poking out into other areas. So that means this one down here, if it's not double five, it would have to be what? Zero, it would have to be zero six and zero four. Well, no, it wouldn't have to be because it could be zero five this way, but then we could put the double zero here and then we could have a five pointing up into that 10. Sorry, I'm obviously missing some clever way to go about this. You know, we could do something like this. I don't know if that's likely to be correct. I don't even think I have enough ways to make 10 now over... No, I don't. Right, this could never have been a 6. Sorry, we already determined that. We need our 6s and 5s. We need those things. So this would have to be like a four, three, I guess, or something like that, because we have one extra four. I don't know that this is a good way to be doing this puzzle. I don't really feel that it is. This doesn't work anyway, because now we need another double zero. Yeah, okay. So anyway, that was all to just wonder, can I make, can I split these across at the bottom here? I still potentially could with the four. Oh, do we not have a four zero though? Interesting. So this would have to be something else. Okay, I don't know. Sorry, I'm thinking about this poorly. Um, what about this equivalence region, the smaller two sized one? Um, oh, you know what I should do? I should add up our digits here actually because we've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 over here, 60, 70. We've got 70 
made up of the tens. And the, the big zero region is zero, so it doesn't matter. So we've got 70 plus two of something plus a void. That should allow me to figure this out. Okay, so let's count how many digits we have in the dominoes. Sorry, this is taking so long. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause the video while I count that because I don't want you to subject you to it. So be right back. Okay, that was absolutely worth doing. That was extremely interesting because what I've determined is that the number of pips, the num total number of pips to which we have access is 73, and 70 of them are spoken for just with these 10 regions, which means we need to fit, and obviously the zeros are irrelevant because they don't, they don't contribute to the count. So what that means is we need to spread only three, the value of three in total across this equivalence region and that um, void cell over there, which means all three of them are ones. All three, each of those three cells is a one, which means we can put the one zero. Let's see, which do I think is more likely here? I think it's less constricted to put it here because that doesn't, if we, if we put it this way, it immediately determines where the doubled zero goes, which I don't know want to do just yet. Boy, I find this difficult sometimes. Okay, there we go. So now we need two ones over there. We only have two ones. So that's immediately useful because we we need to put the one three here because if we put it here, it would break that 10 region. We don't have a seven. So, so this goes here and then our other one points down to a four. And so that one now needs a six. We only have one way to do that without breaking the puzzle because if we put a six zero down there, it would break a 10. So now we need a four that points across into, yeah, it can't be the four, three. Boy, I should have done this right at the beginning. So it'll be this four, five. We now need a five that points up. Can't be five, three, can't be five, zero. It's double five. We now need a five that points up. Um, it'll be this one because it can't be a zero. And then we need to finish this with two twos to make a total of 10. Six plus four is ten. Great. Okay. Boy, this is so much easier now that I've now that I've actually kind of logically thought about it. Um, so now the only way to make this final ten is with a six four. So the four points up to avoid putting the three into our equivalence region. The six points across. We put the doubled zero here. Uh, more doubles, and these will add up to ten, and that's that. Okay. That took me much longer than it should have. I'm sorry. Uh, but at least I got on the right track eventually. I mean, that was that was really nice once I um, understood what what I was doing. And and look, it spells ten, and we had all those tens. Didn't even didn't even think to connect those. All right, there we go. Those were the pips. Back tomorrow. Bye for now.